press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update. Comes as world leaders gather in Davos to discuss the global economy and free trade is high on the agenda. Prime Minister Narendra Modi is the first Indian leader to attend the World Economic Forum in Davos in 20 years. It is one of the fastest growing in the world. The government expects growth of 6.5% uh, this fiscal year. The IMF forecasts an expansion to hit 7.4% next year. Despite economic reforms like the controversial demonetization plan and the goods and services tax. Well, Mr. Modi faces a huge challenge regarding guarding the wealth gap. 1% of India's population owns nearly 60% of the economy. Well, the gap is second only to Russia. Prime Minister Modi opened the World Economic Forum with some tough talk on trade. Let's hear what he had to say. Protectionism. Forces of protectionism are raising their heads against globalization. Their intention is not only to avoid globalization themselves, but they also want to reverse its natural flow. The result of all of this is that we get to witness new types of tariff and non-tariff barriers. Bilateral and multilateral trade agreements and negotiations have come to a kind of standstill. Narendra Modi there, the World Economic Forum. For more, I'm joined now by a business correspondent in Mumbai, Suranjana Tiwari. He uh, talked about a range of issues, but what impact will this have uh, on his trade relations and business relationship with the rest of the world? Well, Rico, uh, Prime Minister Modi really echoed a lot of what China's President Xi Jinping said last year at Davos. He sought to position India as a kind of counter to the US and China. He brought up a lot of other issues apart from protectionism, including terrorism and climate change. Uh, and he really alluded to China's hunt for natural resources in Africa and also knocked um, its relationship with Pakistan, which India accuses of promoting terrorism. But his speech was really really uh, really targeted at one country only, that was the United States and its pursuit of protectionism. Those policies are really hurting domestic business here in India. Uh, tariffs and non-tariff barriers are blocking exports and Mr Modi said that that's also affecting foreign investment. But he also used his speech to position India as a place to do business. He wants to attract foreign investment. And he said that India is now rolling out the red carpet rather than red tape. He said that um, India has already broken down around 1,400 archaic laws that were uh, blocking growth and that um, India is very much open for business. But his, the theme of his speech was globalization. He quoted a scripture that said that the world's one big family and said uh, the world should try to bridge distances rather than break them down. So, Jana Tiwari, our Mumbai business reporter, thank you so much for that update. Stay with India, and in the past few years, the country has emerged as a fierce battleground for international technology companies. You have Amazon, Uber, Google, Facebook. They all want a slice of a very promising market and are making investments to secure that. Google made its first direct investment in India recently, shelling out $12 million in a little-known startup called Dunzo, which connects freelancers to small, odd jobs. Devina Gupta traveled to Bengaluru to find out what caught Google's interest in this company. At this time last year, 33-year-old Kabir Biswas was staring at a crisis. His app-based task service had started off well. Busy professionals used Dunzo to get their groceries picked up, their laundry done, and much more. But two years on, he was struggling to pay his 1,500 bikers. That's when Google came calling. Logistics as a space has been tough for people to invest in. We really excited about the Google conversation was that all the conversations were very product-led. Right, they were about solving a problem. With almost 500 million users, India is the world's second largest online market and is growing. Global giants like Amazon and Alibaba realize the potential in India. And with an investment in a homegrown startup like Dunzo, Google is sending a clear message that it is here to stay and it can be more than just a search engine.
To do that, Google is going beyond the virtual world into the real world by allowing customers to search and then purchase within its ecosystem. A number of other companies that are doing things like this in many markets, right? Um, we, when we typically do an, um, an investment like this, and we've done a number of investments like this around the world and also in India, um, we tend to look at, like, are they in the right space? We tend to look at, like, do they have the right product? And most importantly, do they have the right team? And in this case, like, we were really excited by all three uh, factors. <laughs> The deal has changed the fortunes of those working for Dunzo. Regular income and job security are invaluable to them. Are you guys feeling cold? I forgot my jacket. Maybe I should call for it from home. And for Dunzo customers like Hansa, it's a service she has come to rely on, especially on days when the office is cold. It would have taken me like an hour to get my jacket, but I got it in 10 minutes. Danzo serves almost 3,500 customers every day and is planning to expand into another city. You can't put a price on convenience. And that's something tech giant Google has realized is the key to getting a foothold in the Indian market. Devina Gupta, BBC News, Bengaluru.